Hello everyone, it's Tanya with Scribbles and Time. I am so excited to be back. I'm, I've been gone for a while. I have not made, I haven't filmed a video. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Um, I will put timestamps below for the start of this flip through. This is Waverly, everyone. I want to introduce you to Waverly. Um, so, if you're new, one thing to know about me is I do tend to talk a lot. It's just, I, I can't help it. It's who I am. And, um, yeah, there'll be timestamps. If you don't want to hear me talk, I don't, uh, you know, I don't blame you. I understand. Go down to the timestamps and it'll take you right to where I start this flip through. But I feel like there's something I, I need to explain about this journal that pertains to the actual <laughs> flip through. So I want to explain um, that after I filmed my last video, I started making, well, I, I created a couple of custom journals for family members as Christmas gifts and then one for a friend. And I don't normally do journals that way because for me that puts pressure on me because I feel like... Um, that I'm trying to create something that's specific to a person's style. And then I start getting stressed out about, oh, are they going to like this? Or maybe they would like this better or, you know, this color, that color. Um, one of the people does not even like vintage items. They like, like new shiny pictures and just things that I can't relate to. And for me, it creates almost a sense of anxiety. And I don't know if any of you know what I'm talking about. If if you're just one of those people that can create to any style, that is awesome. But I can't. I just, when I'm creating something, I like to just go with what my personality is calling for and then hope that it suits someone else's taste. So... By the time January rolled around, I was so, I don't even know the right words. Y'all, I haven't filmed a video in so long. I feel like I don't know what to do with my hands. First of all, my hands are horrible. They're covered in glue. I don't even have my rings on. I feel like I should hide my hands. Um, but when January rolled around, I was literally like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Maybe I was just burned out. I didn't feel like I was burned out. I really wanted to make a journal, but I could not. I, I felt anxiety about making a journal everything I was doing I was putting all these rules on myself like you know uh, I, I can't stand for glue to show like that's one of my pet peeves I don't like for the shiny glue to show um it, it's just weird and, and like with certain sketches I don't like for a, a, a pencil line that uh, I don't know. I was putting these weird rules on myself and I felt like everything I was doing I was second guessing myself. I, I, you know, there's all these little rules that I think that we kind of put into play when we're creating journals. You know, don't let shiny tape, no shiny pictures, or don't use brittle paper, but use something old but not brittle. You know, <laughs> anyway, I started putting all these little rules on myself, and it was just making it not fun. And so, I started sketching instead and drawing. And I do love that. That's like one of the things I've been doing since I was like 10 years old. I started taking art lessons at like 10 or 12. And um, it's always kind of just been my thing. But all of my life, when I draw, it changes. And, and I'm, I don't know the science facts behind this, but like I used to love math. Like I loved math. I wanted to be an algebra teacher when I grew up. But um, I was so good at math when I was young. People could like read off numbers and I could literally add them in my head as fast as someone would say them. And any time I started sketching and drawing, I would lose that math ability, like not lose it all the way, but like I wouldn't be able to, I wasn't fast with it anymore. It was like once I started drawing, it would cancel out <laughs> my math. So I don't know the science behind that. I'm assuming that you're using the same part of your brain and I don't know, but I do know that whatever happens when I start sketching and drawing, it makes me kind of um, overthink things sometimes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I could not create a journal. What I did think to do was when I draw, it's all about repetition. When I'm trying to perfect a drawing, which to me, I never perfect a drawing, but when I'm trying to get better, it's repetition. You try to draw a bird, you draw it again, you draw it again, you draw it again. 
right now trees are my passion. I've always loved trees, so trees, trees, trees. But then when I'm flipping through a sketchbook, I don't like for it to be the same picture 50 times in different renditions and versions. So I decided to create some sketchbooks. I think I created like 10 of them total, and I'm down now to five, and I think two of these are spoken for. But anyway, um, but that way I had these to like go through and practice drawing in individually. But the first thing I noticed even creating these was that little sense of perfection that kept wanting to kick in for some weird reason. So the very first one, these, these, this series is called the Waverly Novels, and I had the whole set of books. I think I bought them at an antique shop in Savannah. Either that or I got them on eBay. I can't remember, but I did buy a set at in Savannah at an antique shop, and it might have been this set. But um, wherever I got them from, once I got home, I did that same weird thing that I always do when I get old books. I started looking at them and thinking, Oh, maybe I'll read one one day. I wonder what the people 150 years ago read. Like, what kind of stories are these? And, oh, I'll read it one day. And I can't even see to read. I have to put on reading glasses. And then those make me fall asleep when I start reading. It's the glasses, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just start putting all these expectations on myself. And so I finally decided the only way I was going to move past this was just to face all of these little things head on and defy them. So I've always said when you create, don't put boundaries on yourself. I've always said that. And for some reason, I was putting all these boundaries on myself. So the very first, I guess this is the first one of the series because this one is actually called Waverly. And then all the other ones have different names. Like this one's called the Betrothed or Betrothed, however you say it. Anyway, um, so, it just so happened that Waverly had these brittle pages in it. And I don't know if you've ever tried to create anything with brittle pages. It's almost a complete no-no, like you don't do it. But if you ever do try to do it, you end up putting more work into this kind of stuff than you would if you were using something new. Because you're trying to save something and give something new life. And so, this book here... Um, I started creating the very first sketchbook on. I'm going to go ahead and take these bookmarks out that I have in here. Um, so it had brittle pages. Let me show you. Let me reach over and grab. So these are the pages. And I was determined to use them, which whew, was a nightmare. You can see how brittle they are. You like bend them. They break completely. Um, literally start disintegrating when you, you know, are turning the pages or anything like it just you know if you put any pressure on the edge at all it's just brittle so what I did I started thinking it through and you'll see how all these edges here I started going through and tearing the pages out and I would get glue and put all around the edges so that when you then put them together with the edges one page secured the other page that way if this did break it would be stuck to the page behind it, and so on and so on. So I would do a whole stack of them like that. Then I started noticing that I was getting all paranoid about, like, the ripples if you didn't smooth your glue out. That's another pet peeve of mine. I can't stand that. So I said, you know what? Let's do it. If we're going to do it, I had been smoothing it out, making sure that they were all smooth, and I finally said, why am I trying so hard to be perfect. It's not who I am. I love to embrace imperfections. So I was like, uh-uh, we're not going to do that. And so I literally, it was so freeing. <laughs> I literally just started putting the glue, pressing it down, and almost pushing the paper to create ripples. Which, by the way, as a side note, if you do that and then you get like one of the Stabilo pencils, you put the gesso on the paper, put the and then it like dampen it so that it runs all in those ripples and crevices. It can create the coolest pattern to then base a sketch off of. That's another story. Um, but yeah, that's what I started doing. So I started just grouping these papers together, gluing one to the other in the most sloppy way that I could. At first I was using art glitter glue, um, which I still used a lot around the edges, but then I started purposely using some of my um, like Fabri-Tac, which is so expensive, but... 
I wanted the shiny glue to show on some areas. I wanted it to look homemade and almost like a primitive homemade feel. So that's what I did and I felt like this was important to explain so that you could kind of maybe get, I don't know, if you're ever suffering through something where you are trying so hard to make something look perfect, stop if you're not happy doing that. If you're happy doing it that way, that's great. But if you're not, stop and pull out the most messed up thing you have and see what you can create with it because that that challenge just helped to kind of free me of trying to make something look perfect because let me tell you, it, you can't make this look perfect. It is just, you can't. And now that it's done, I love it. I mean, it's as perfect to me <laughs> as it can be. Um, but it's because I know the love and attention I put into it. Other people might look at it and think, eh, but I know what I've done and I am proud of myself because I overcame something that was really blocking me. And anyway, I just wanted to share this story because if any of you go through that, just stop and recognize what it is that's bothering you and face it head on and see if that doesn't help you heal through that hurdle because this really did. And I'm so thankful. And this has been just such a challenge that I'm so glad I went through. I was upset about it and now I'm so happy. And so let's start the flip through now, now that I've kind of explained myself. And as we do, you're going to see when I flip through this, um, it is, ooh, it is grungy. And I'll explain some more about, you know, my process and my thoughts on that. And, um, I, I hope that somebody out there enjoys this <laughs> video and I hope that someone can get inspired and if not, <laughs> I hope I don't look as or sound as silly as I feel talking about it. Maybe I'm not the only one, but all I know is that for me, this was a big, big obstacle and I'm very, very, um, I guess I was frustrated and now I'm just proud that I faced it head on. And I feel like in so many ways, it just helped to heal me. And I am so thankful for this challenge. So with that being said, let's talk about Waverly. Waverly, I named her Waverly because of this book being the Waverly novels. And this one is actually called Waverly. Waverly is roughly with the stuff poking out, probably about seven and a half inches across. Um, probably about nine and a half inches and then for the height if, if you have watched my videos before you know that I like to create things that if you set it on a coffee table it, it just evokes conversation it makes people want to look at it and say what is that so it's about five and a half inches tall or thick however you want to say it and um, so it almost if it sits on a coffee table it almost looks like a box and that's what I like so I, I like it to be where if somebody comes over, they're like, what is that? And they're picking it up and looking at all the personality in it. And hopefully it's full of your personality. And that's what it's all about. Um, so um, I put this vintage lace here on the front. I had one of these buttons. Um, I had hoped to find two so I could use them here. I just thought that button was so pretty. It's this real pale peachy color but I only had one, so I chose to use it right there on the lace, kind of as a focal point. And then, um, this is an old pen I bought at an antique store. There's a frame here, and I did put a little bit of the like gold leafing around it. And then behind it, so it does have glass on the frame, and so I cut this little bookmark. Um, it has these little peaches, and since the button was peach, I just thought that was so cool. And I even had this little peach, like pom-pom ball, ball um, that I thought coordinated with those peaches. So I tucked it in here behind the glass. And that tab is just for, you know, easy removal. But it does also layer well with this little hand-stitched um, tag that's back behind it. And then under all of this is a book cover. And those are the books that I used in the um, fairy journal I made back when I did the grandma junk journal, um, drawer, junk drawer things, kits. 
And then um, there's like this navy blue, it's almost coming off black um, on the camera. A navy blue book cover and then the Waverly book here. I got this thick rope and I literally went through, I stitched through all three of these covers, wrapped it and secured this down. And I got these strips of leather and I did this little stitching, and I wish I could remember the name of the stitching. I need to look it up, but when my dad was with me, he, um, you know, taught me how to do this little stitch that a lot of people do when they're working with leather. I'm sure seamstress might know. I mean, I don't sew. But, um, anyway, my daddy just told me about that stitch, and so I did it the way my daddy taught me, but I did it to where one of the knots is up here, and one's down here, and the knots show. That's not really what you normally would do. And then the... Um, handle here. It's metal and it is um, substantial. It is like solid, heavy. It's a nice handle. <laughs> it's got gold trim and it's kind of a pretty white, um, kind of a creamy white color. And I screwed it on through the book covers as well. Hanging from it is this little dangle that I made out of just kind of braiding all this string and cords and I just haphazardly braided it, stitched it around the handle. There's a vintage button. Of course, the peach pom-pom. There's a wood um, bead right there, which I just thought the wood coordinated with the color of the book and the leather. And there's a wood ring. There's a little um, crystal, uh, like a quartz stone there. And then just some um, thread. Just all kind of little, kind of quirky um, oh, there's a little crystal butterfly. I don't even know if that's going to show up very well on camera. Um, and yeah, that's hanging from the handle. Um, you can kind of see this that I'm using as a bookmark is there at the top. A little flower is there stitched to that piece of lace. Um, over here, tucked into this little tuck spot, I have slid um, two more things that you can cut down. So if you take this out, you'll see that I decorated the cover behind that glass in a way that it's still pretty with nothing else back there. But you can interchange all of these. Like if you wanted to go with this look, you could totally go with that look. Um, if you wanted to take that out and cut this down to size, Look how pretty that one is back there. Of course, that would be cut off, so it would look like that. And then there's this way. Just different looks. I am also need to mention, I am filming with a brand new phone. Brand new. I don't even know if it's filming. That's how bad this is. Like, I hope it is. <laughs> I might just be talking to myself here. Um, there's another option. And then there's an option. And any of these are beautiful to me. I did go with um, this one because of the, I thought the peaches just looked so cool with that. Just like that. And then um, the top view looks like this. The spine. I ran strips of leather. They're non-functional. It's just for looks. But I did stitch them through the covers as well so that they're stitched on. There's the opening of the book. The back of the book, you'll see that the leather wraps around and I've stitched the buttons through the back spine. And then there's fabric back here that I'll show you at the end of the flip through, but I've actually stitched it on with twine through the cover. I even did one stitch just to make it look, I guess, kind of primitive or homemade with some um, little piece of cord. And I got some fuzz caught up in that one, of course intentionally, but it's supposed to just look, you know, quirky. So I think that kind of shows you everything about the outside. Oh, I dropped it. So we'll go ahead and flip it open now. Pick that up so I don't lose it. Okay. So when you open this up, you're looking at this. So we're going to come over here first to the sketchbook. So, as I was saying earlier, I did several of these sketchbooks. This one does not have as many sketches as the others do uh, because I had already set it aside at that point to use for this journal. 
um, I'm going to pull these back out. And now I want to show you just how <laughs> messed up <laughs> I did this um, intentionally. Um, so I have used fabric tape. I've used shiny tape. The rusty staples are all through it. And I've gotten those from um, Kathy at Rust Paper Scissors. Check her out. Um, but yeah, I've, I've made sure glue is showing. You can see some glue right there because I did use glue under the tape just as extra security. This might be old. It might be brittle paper, but I made sure it's assembled in a way that it is, it's pretty tough. Um, I mean, obviously it's, it's old, it's homemade. Um, I wouldn't be throwing this thing around, but I'm telling you this thing, I have assembled it in a way that it's, it's every piece is holding the next piece on very securely. And I bundled together tons of pages to add strength to these brittle pages. Um, the fabric in some areas, I've put book pages and then tore them off. Um, and then there's masking tape. There's all kind of tapes. This is the title page from Ray Waverly, which I loved that title page. I want to start doing a lot of like architectural style drawings. Like I loved, I want to try to draw this so badly. Um, wouldn't that be pretty done in charcoal? But it'd be hard to compare to that. Anyway, um, I'm real into sketching right now for some reason. <laughs> But yeah, secured all the pages. So I left the pages pretty well blank. And here's my thought process on that. So there are some pretty pictures in here from the books themselves. There's just pretty, um, you know, pit, um, writing and depictions on the pages. But I also, my thought was, if someone didn't want to sketch, if somebody didn't want to put gesso all over the pages and sketch on it, go through and tape flowers on it. Get your washi tape and put strips of washi tape. Just put things that make you happy. Or you can just glue regular paper on here to journal on. Whatever makes you happy. You can put mixed media paper on there. Um, now, watercolor paper, I probably would do outside of the book. Do your little picture on it, paint it, whatever, and then attach it in the book. Um, right here, normally I would run that through a laminating machine, but nope. I put it down and put shiny tape over it just to make it look like that was my little homemade laminating. I do have a laminating machine, but no, we didn't do that. And um, yeah, that's I put book page here and then tore it off. You can actually see inside the spine in several places. That's where some pages are torn out. Those are brittle there. They'll eventually fall out. Use the pieces. Uh, this is what I was doing in a bunch of them. Get the shiny tape. Get these little pieces as they break off. Stick them to the tape and then stick the tape in here with all those little pieces under it. I loved it. It was personality. These are some weed sketches um, that I've been working on. I practiced them. I've probably done, oh, probably at least 20 of them just trying to practice and get better at it. This, you can see into the spine really well on this one. Um, this is one of my tree sketches. I love, love, love trees. To me, I try to make the trees look like the like veins almost like veins because to me trees are the heart of nature and I just wanted to make them look alive somehow um anyway I don't know that's just me being me being me um there's just gesso there and it's it can be sanded down but like I said the papers have ridges and ripples and staples and whatever <laughs> so just I, I really encourage if anyone has obstacles, just embrace the obstacles because uh, it, otherwise you end up just getting locked up by them. And I just don't think that was healthy for me. I needed this escape. <laughs> you can see inside the spine there. I hope y'all can relate. I, I'm probably coming off sounding really weird. Um, I put all this extra paper back here. In case somebody wanted to use that to go in and cover up the shiny tape, I've done that in some areas too. There were some areas where I needed to secure the um, brittle edges, so I would put shiny tape there, and then I would get a piece of paper and glue that over. There's even some of these pages where I use shiny tape instead of glue to glue the next, I mean to attach the next one on because the tape gave it more stability from cracking. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I've done. So I've put this extra paper here just to tear off and use it however you want to. 
And then when you're done with all that paper, I would recommend just tearing it here and here so that there's the strip under the tape. There's a piece of tape coming across here. What that tape is doing is it's going over that piece of rope that is brought through the three covers that attaches that front on. So you can feel the rope back there. You can kind of feel the screws that's holding the handle on where I screwed screws in for that handle that's on the front. On the edge here, you'll see, let me hold it up, where I attached a bunch of pages together. I glued all the edges together and then I folded them over on themselves and just ran some rusty staples through them. Um, this fabric here, there's two pieces. There's a white piece underneath the bottom. It's a solid white piece. And then I put this piece on the top and that line, the, all, both pieces line the spine holding this whole book together as well as that double-sided carpet tape and a lot of glue and I stitched the outside um, that, um, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> all those laces and all, I stitched them through as well just for added security. Um, but I did go through on this upper piece and put rips in it so that if you look, you can see there's like, and you can see the um, fabric in between the signatures and there's just rips throughout. I, I wanted it to look torn. To me, that's just adding to the look. And it was so much fun. It was freeing. <laughs> um, there's that little flower that shows from the outside. It's like this little grunged up crocheted flower on this lace um, placemat. And then when you open that up, this is a feather from my yard. And I'm pretty sure it's a hawk feather. We have a lot of hawks. Um, so yeah, that's a feather from my yard. And then behind it, I think that might be considered upholstery fabric. I have a whole roll of it. And then um, some burlap. And then some like ribbon that's just kind of stitched in on that ruffle with the feather there on the top. And then put the page. This is some beautiful trim. It's kind of a pretty pale pink peachy color and it's from India. Love that. All of the, um, this is all mixed media paper that's here in this section. I always call this the art section. And I always line it with fabric. So if you look in between there, you'll see a strip of fabric. And the reason I do that is because with mixed media paper, I know that somebody might be doing something where paint or water might would go down into that crease. And so I feel like the fabric is just going to help stabilize that paper if water gets down there to give it more stability so that the water doesn't cause it to tear. And then on this side, um, so where the ruler is, on the other side I have this fabric that I've just kind of ruffled together and stitched. And then here I left the um, string. Now I use the Crawford Irish Wax Linen um, thread for stitching my signatures. It's my favorite thread. It's expensive. It's like $23 for a little spool of it, but it is my favorite. I feel like that it's the most, I feel like it's strong. It's the four ply Irish wax linen by Crawford. Of course, the fabric coming down, and then I put a strip there just to add extra personality. And then I left those in case you want to tie something else or snip them off and use it to hang something from somewhere else. Um, more of the mixed media paper in the other side and then you can see the fabric in between there. This is some type of embroidered, I think it would be considered a doily. I don't think you would call that a placemat. It is rectangle. Um, the mixed media paper. Here I've got a zipper pull hanging from that and then the other one is there in case you want to tie a strip of fabric there. And then the other side of the dolly. Okay, inside of this bag, so this whole signature here is one bag. And so the first part of the bag where the handles are, I've attached this piece of metal off of a picture frame. And then I've put some of that brittle paper inside of here. And then I did line the bag with fabric and stitched it. And this paper can be like glued down. Y'all might be fixing to hear my doggy bark, so sorry. Um, but this paper can be glued down in different areas just to decorate, or you can 
start gluing them together to add to this book if you wanted to. Put gesso on a page, sketch or paint, and then attach it inside there. Um, they are brittle though, so I don't know. I've got them folded. I don't know how long they're gonna hold up like that. But again, tape or glue them. You can make it work. Um, this here is the other side of the bag. So what I did was I tore the bag open and I stitched it in. I made a little, like a little scruffy journal right here. I used shiny tape on the back of each page for stability, like that. And then this is the one side of the bag. And then where I stitched that in, there is a um, quartz crystal, it's a broken heart. The tip is broken. And then this is like a, a I guess a washer, maybe a nut. I'm not real sure, but yeah. Maybe a nut and a broken heart. <laughs> Story of our lives. This is like a really, I thought it was so cute. It's a Christian book and it's the story of Joseph. And it's like a children's, out of a children's book. But I stitched that whole thing in as part of the signature. And I just think the pictures are so precious. Look at that. And then I kind of clip it shut with this. And I left these little black things on it because I thought the black looked good when it's poking out of the outside of the book. But then when you take them off, there are holes that you could attach. That's why I left all that extra um, wax linen thread because you can attach stuff from those holes and hang some charms. And it was still very pretty that way as well. But it's kind of a whole different look. And I wasn't real sure how anybody would want to go with that. I personally kind of like the black showing. So I did it like that. This is a um, reproduction, it's like a piece of a card tag. And I grunged it up with some alcohol inks. And then I put it on as if it were a, um, a, a tuck spot. Or maybe a belly band would be more of a description. But then I attached this little pocket here because if you slide it all the way down into that pocket, it creates a tab look when the journal's closed so that it looks like a tab poking out like that. So I like that, but those are the pieces that I was showing you you can interchange here on the front. On this side, I created this little, this is the other side of the bag, and I created this pocket and I put pictures in that came out of some of these books, some of the picture plates like that. And, um, my thought with that was if someone did not want to do like actual art on the mixed media paper, they could just go in and attach these pictures and let that kind of serve as their art, was my thought. Um, and you could do that with any pictures, but I did want to put some of those in with this. So I'm going to slide those back into here, like so. It's a tight fit. There it goes. Like that. And then this is, I think it would be called a, um, well, I was just going to say a dolly, but I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. It's, it's embroidered. It's got this beautiful little flower on it. And then this, is that called ticking around the side? It's so pretty. And then the mixed media paper, this, I guess, would be called, maybe is it called ratten or it's like wicker. It almost feels like wicker. But I stitched this cord on each end so that if it starts to unravel, it's stitched through to keep it from unraveling any farther than that point right there on the top and the bottom. The fabric coming down there with a little wooden bead that shows on the outside of the journal. This is a old, grungy, old piece of paper that I just kind of attached there. And then this is the back of the book. And this is the buttons that secures the outer button zone. This fabric here I've bunched together and stitched. There's a piece of foam. It came, This came off of, I think, a, a chair pad but, or a stool or something. Um, and it's got a little piece of foam here. And I left that on there because I thought that might would be cool if somebody wanted to like run a pin through it. Again, I stitched it onto the back cover, okay? 
So that is Waverly. And um, Waverly, so I have I'm going to be sending um, the pictures of Waverly out to I have a few people left on my on my waiting list for a journal. So I'll be sending the pictures out to them for first options to purchase. And then if Waverly doesn't sell, I will post her for sale. Or you can reach out to me on my um, email, which is scribblesintime at gmail.com. And, um, and I would love to hear from you even if you're not interested in, in Waverly. Um, I would just love to hear from you or comment below. Please subscribe to my channel. And very quickly, I do want to talk about the sketchbooks. Like I said, I think two of these are spoken for. I did have ten total. Well, then I put one in there, so that made nine. And now I'm down to five, and I think two are spoken for, but I don't know which two. So for that reason, I want to just kind of quickly flip through them so that the two people that had wanted one can tell me which ones they want. And then if anyone else is interested, um, email me. Again, scribblesintime at gmail.com. These are $185 plus shipping, okay? And they're done basically the same way as that. Each one of these has, I believe, five sketches in it. Um, and they're all very similar. I've got um, alcohol inks, tapes, paper, glue. I don't want anyone to have the expectation that these things are in, like, pristine condition. These are grungy. They're meant to be grungy. If paper tears, it's okay. Either glue it to the paper behind it or put tape down it and then gesso over it or attach a plain piece of paper. Embrace its, its imperfections and just go with what it is. It is my hopes of anything <laughs> of this nature. It's old. It's not meant to be pristine and new, nor would I want it to be. Um, I left some pictures in, most of them. This is one of the weed pictures I've done. On pages that are um, glued together, I've tried to put something that kind of represents a tab so that you're not trying to separate the pages. There's plenty of pages of gesso here that you can go in and create your own sketches or whatnot. It's a sketch I did, and I just kind of flapped that in on a page. Oh, I did put extra paper in the backs of each of these in case you want to do that. If you want to flap in a drawing, um, you can do that or glue all these pages together and flap it in like a whole other group of, of pa paper just to add more bulk. Um, this is one of those little, it's my first attempt. I, I want to practice that many more times. But this one I'm calling the Monastery because that's what it's called, the Monastery. Um, the weed picture right there. All right, I think my son has just come over, so the doggies are fixing to bark. Um, this one is Peveril of the Peak. Um, something like that. The papers fell out of it. Let me put the papers back. Okay, and it has a bird drawing. There's the weed. Basically the same exact principle as the others. The mountains. It's a piece of washi tape. I hardly ever use washi tape. That was another hurdle I was trying to get through. The other weed. And there's that paper. Okay. This one is called The Antiquary, and it's just the same scenario. Let's see what pictures. Bubba, come here, baby. Come here. There's leaves. Loved, uh, I love drawing that. I want to go back and do some more of those, some more of the weeds. And then drawing there. I actually had started like a little journal in this one. Um, there's nothing inappropriate. I think it's just talking about the beauty of a new day or something. And another weed. And there's the extra paper for that. So again, that's the antiquary. So bro bro, my little brody boy is up. He's going on 19. 
He is a challenge these days. He, he can no longer see or hear, but he still acts so happy. So, but it is a challenge dealing with blind and deaf dog, a bird. There's that tree where I was talking about. Um, I tried to make it look like veins. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to figure out this phone and how reorient, reorienting the picture. I don't even know if I'm going to know how to do that. I hate when I get a new phone. New technology drives me crazy. All right, so here's the paper in the back of that one. And again, that one's called the betrothed. Is that right? Is that what we said it was called? Yeah, the betrothed. Okay, betrothed. All right, this one is the talisman. And I don't know what it is about this one, but it feels so good in the hands. It just, I don't know, it feels rounded or something. It's no different than the others. <laughs> There's the title page to it. I do not see a year on it. And I don't remember what year these are from. There's one of the weed drawings. You can see torn pages like that. This is a secret. Um, it's a secret message to myself. It, it's a full sentence. All of the letters from the sentence are somehow incorporated in there. And only I know what it says. <laughs> it's fun. It's just fun to find things to doodle and just sit and doodle and have fun with it. And if you don't want my drawings in it, I mean, first of all, create your own. These these are just no, no boundaries, no rules. Create your own. But if you want to purchase one and you don't like my drawings in here, just cover them up, put, glue a piece of paper over it. It's okay. Or glue that page down to that page, and then it's gone. <laughs> so, yeah, if you if you want it to be your own drawings and not mine, then have at it. Um, yeah, practice, practice. It's so much fun. It's freeing um, to make mistakes. And to allow yourself to make mistakes. That's, that's for me, that's healing. Um, there's a tree. Oh, these are the extra papers. There's a tree in this one. Again, I tried to make the, make it look like things. I did a weird um, a fairy. So I tried to draw a fairy. We haven't seen the fairy yet. Where, what, which one was the fairy in? Um, yeah, the fairy. So if you draw with um, pencils or charcoal, it's very hard to draw something that's whimsical because it can come off looking so dark. Um, and, and yeah, when I first started her, I was going for whimsical and like pretty. And then she ended up looking very gothic. And it was my first, my first try. Um, and as much as I want to try, try again, <laughs> I don't know if I can draw with, um, you know, just charcoal. A whimsical style fairy. They just come off, I think, looking too dark. If I can find her, I'll show her to you so that you understand what I'm saying. Because, yeah, even when you spray the sealer on there so that the pencil won't, won't smudge anymore, it kind of causes the, um, the tone. There it is. I missed it. She's in the uh, peveril of the peak. But, yeah, she came off looking a little bit dark, like... Maybe gothic is the wrong word, but yeah, she looks not as whimsical <laughs> as I had tried, but I was trying to make her skirt out of leaves and then her wings um, kind of doing them like the way I did the trees. But again, once I sprayed her, it kind of blended the, um, the depth all together and she just came off looking dark. But again, if you don't like her, you can glue over her. <laughs> Um, I do want to practice her more, but I might do her in either watercolor or pastels. Okay, that completes the flip through. Gosh, if you hung in there with me, thank you. I don't even know how many minutes this is long, but I really had catching up to do. 44 minutes. So I'm going to let y'all go. If you hung in there, thank you so much. And it is so good to be back. I am so thankful for all of you, each and every one of you. Y'all are precious souls to me. I love you very much through Christ, and I hope that you have a blessed day. Get out there and live your life to the fullest. Make it bright. Shine your light bright, and please, please keep in touch. Love you all.